So, Dan, we're getting ready to go to uh, CES pretty soon. Yeah. A lot of big TVs on the floor, a lot of talk about TVs in the uh, meeting halls. Uh, of interesting role of the television, of, of glass. Yeah, glass um, is important. You know, why is glass important and how might that sort of change the advertising game? Um, I mean, I think we've seen now that these TVs are digital devices connected to the internet in the home that on the glass technology, on the glass measurement, on the glass ability to uh, version the creative message or do something different, depending on how that person is, is streaming to that piece of glass, the opportunities are endless and there's different ways to innovate around that, that on the glass experience. So how might things develop with programmers like Fox, you know, um, uh, sort of addressing content on a programming level? Uh, you know, that's something that's a bit away, but yeah. how do you see that developing? I mean, I think again, it's tapping into different opportunities when and where available. Uh, for us, the near-term opportunity looks like linear creative ad versioning with national scale. So taking a spot that's across the Fox footprint nationally and divvy that up within specific households um, that we know more information about. So allowing an advertiser to become a little bit more intimate with the message to someone that they know has a specific character trait or attribute. Um, and then there's fallback creative. So you're always gonna get the generic ad and have that opportunity to brand with the national scale that Fox provides. But when there is data and that person's tuned into our channel with the ability to specifically address them, it's, it's a step toward programmer addressability and we're excited for what that can, can bring. So could you explain a little bit more about that, a little bit more how it works, the vendors you work with, and the scale of it now and where it might be going? Yeah, I mean, right now we work with um, the OR Consortium, right? So that's the Vizio Smart TVs. Uh, we've done a little bit of work with a company called Ad Curatio, who's also powering a, a similar technology. Um, and the idea is that within any national spot, there's the ACR technology that's running in the background, picking up the, the SCUDI markers and the Q-tones. Uh, there's on the glass watermarking, capturing that image of what's taking place. And you know, as this technology has evolved and you know, the people behind the scenes have built a, a certain trust and confidence that those marks and signals match, um, we feel good about taking a national spot and, and splitting that up eight to ten different ways, uh, depending on the number of products you have in market, the number of creatives you had, uh, and, and doing something unique and addressable there. So. So how much inventory is involved at this point? Is it just sort of like a little teeny piece or is it bigger or? I would say right now for us, the way we've looked at it is it's, it's made up, you know, we can do this in two different 10 million household footprints today. Um, my hope is that more smart TV, smart TV manufacturers and, you know, MVPDs adopt standardization and, and utilize similar tech. My fear is that there's going to be, you know, 12 to 13 different you know, 10 million household footprints and you have to go to each one and ask for permission and do things, you know, 12 or 13 times, which will complicate it. But my hope is that we get lion's share and uh, more people, you know, come to do it together to enable this and, and move the industry forward. So that works for you guys uh, from an economic standpoint. I suppose it's a big value to the advertiser, but it does change the uh, dynamics of the ad buy, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I think it, it creates an enhancement and a different level of opportunity. Um, it's still measured nationally. It's rolled up on the Nielsen delivery. Um, so nothing really is going to change with the way we've historically transacted. It's almost like you select an option that we would like to take advantage of this opportunity when and where available. And we lay in those creatives and those data sets behind the scenes. And when that right person is watching on the right TV, um, it could be minimal and we'll see. But I think that there's just the opportunity to do it and there's probably some additional value that will be tacked on. Uh, for that addressability. So Dan, coming up pretty soon is the Super Bowl. You guys yeah. are uh, are going to be the uh, are the network this year, we are. and um, we we read that you've sold out the inventory. Uh, uh, tell us sort of why the Super Bowl is hot, and maybe some uh, interesting learnings you might want take away from uh, the way you guys produce and distribute it this year. Yeah, no, I mean I I'm not personally involved in the Super Bowl ad sales, but as a uh, NFL fan and a Fox employee, I'm thrilled with. The, the game, uh, Miami as a destination, I think as a, a viewer of, of the NFL every weekend, they, the teams are great this year. There's a lot of great storylines from the Baltimore Ravens to the San Francisco 49ers. So I think the, the matchups all were going to be exciting uh, throughout the, the championship rounds into the Super Bowl. So we're excited, uh, and I just think it's the right city, it's the right time. It's been a strong season from an NFL rating standpoint, and it should all really culminate down in South Beach with a, with a great game. And live sports is a... Good business. Live sports is a great business to be in. I think uh, 
the power of live, the story with the Women's World Cup into Major League Baseball like we've talked about, the World Series going seven games. Um, NFL, college football this season have done huge numbers for us. So I think the position that Fox is in with live sports as our, you know, center foundation, it's, it's fantastic. Great, great. And um, other conversations you expect to have at, uh, at CES, we know you're having a very high level uh, lunch, industry lunch, yeah. leadership lunch with Erwin Gottlieb. Uh, tell us what you hope to find and discuss there. I mean, I think we're hoping to have a lunch of just industry thought leaders to get together and talk about on the glass technology, talk about advanced TV, the different types of innovation and targeting that are now available, and, and what do we really need to bring those pieces together and move the industry forward. So um, we're looking to get a group of people together to have a nice time midweek at CES, have a great conversation over some excellent food and hopefully some, some drinks, uh, and really just talk about where we want the business to go in 2020, what Fox can do to help brands and agencies uh, take advantage of these new capabilities and, and bring them to life. So excited for, for CES to kick off the year with that lunch and really excited for the opportunities uh, that are available on the glass through different targeting and innovation uh, coming in 2020.